Hello there all, welcome back to Yo's Acro. This video is part of the Rubik's Cube series and in the previous one we just finished making the basic model. In this one we are going to add in a few more details and finalize it with some colors. Now the next thing I want to work on is the rounding between the different pieces of the cube. For this I'll use a single piece as an example. Selecting this I'll apply the extrude node and give it a little bit of an inset. What this gets me is these corner edges. If I bevel these corner edges, they are going to give me a bit of space in the corner. So let me apply bevel modifier first. And as you can see, it just gave me that small rounding, but obviously it's flat. I want a proper round. For that, I'll change the option from the flat rounding to a low density. This time, if I increase the repetition, it gives me a very good rounding on the corner. Increase the actual inset to get the amount of rounding you want. Now, the way I was able to get the round is mainly because the extrude modifier was able to give me an edge in the corner. So I want similar edges all over my cube, not only on this particular face. So to do that, I need to get rid of the isolation here. So I'll go remove the primitive number from the group which is going to apply the operation all over the cube which kind of destroyed our cube but that's okay I want the operation applied individually everywhere so for that I'll tell keep point shared to be null this basically helps me create this cube where every single face is beveled individually now once I have this I just need to tell the bevel to select the proper edges there are some procedural ways of doing this, but because I know this is always going to be a 3 cross 3 cube, there is no need to go procedural at this stage. So, going to the bevel node, I can go back to my selection option, and this time, I can select the edges which I want to be properly bevel. So, let me go ahead and do my edges selection. And now with all of my edges selected, all I need to do is press enter and you can see the rounding is applied everywhere. For now, the cube looks like as if it's made of a single surface. It does not look like it has volume. You can see when you look at through one of these holes that there is no side surface which is visible. So this time, well, let's go ahead and create that surface. For that, I'm going to use the extrude modifier again. So using the polygon extrude, let's connect that and this time you can see I can either pull the surfaces out or push them in. I'll just make sure I'm using the normals so that when I pull or push these surfaces they go flat in or out. Let me go ahead and push the surfaces in as much as I can but you can see they actually start intersecting. So let me go ahead remove the output front option. Now when I start pushing or pulling the surface, you can basically see what's happening is that I'm creating side surfaces. So when I look at things from the corner, I should be able to see the surfaces. So that's basically what I'm trying to do, create the sides so that I can see them from the holes. But the problem right now is because I've pushed the surface, I can no longer see the front face, the face which I've worked on so much till now. To get it back, all I need to turn on is the output back. But once it's turned on, you can see there is a bit of a display issue with the cube. Like whatever is actually facing you is in reverse, like you can't see it, but whatever is not facing you can be visible. The reason for that is because under display options, we optimize to remove back faces. If you turn it off, you can see you can actually observe the cube properly. Most times I would suggest to have this on so you know whether or not a face is actually pointing the right direction. Because faces are not pointing the right direction, I can actually apply a reverse node right here, which is going to basically correct the whole problem for us. So here now, I have the cube ready, almost done. Only problem is that all the corners are a little bit too sharp. So let's go ahead in the next step and get rid of the sharp corners with another bevel. Now to actually go ahead and apply the bevel, I need to first select the edges I want to be rounded. If I don't, it's going to destroy the model. Let me show you what that means. Uh, I'll just take in a poly bevel, change in a few of the options, and let me go ahead, give in a little bit of a bevel with a bit of repetitions. Now if I zoom in, 
and check the surface, you can see there are a lot of problems. A lot of unnecessary detail has been added to the surface, which is kind of destroying it. And no matter what option I choose, it's always going to look really, really weird. So I basically don't want any of these things to happen. So the way to avoid that would be to select all the edges which I want to be weld, which is basically all the corners of the cube all the corners on top and the sides of the faces. So the easiest way to do this is using a group node. So let's see how, what the different procedural ways in which we can use a group node to make complex selections. Now to select all of these corner edges, I'm going to make use of the group node. I'll just take one in, change the name of the group to be Bevel. I want the entities in the group to be actually edges, so I'll change that. And also, I don't want to select the edges based on primitive number or point number, so I'll disable this. And I'll switch over to the edges tab. Now, between every single edge I want to select, there are different primitives. Like you can see, every edge is shared between two primitives. And all these primitives have an angle of 90 degree between them. So I can actually make use of that over here. So I'll enable the edge selection and I'll tell the minimum angle between the edges I want selected is going to be a certain value. By default it's 20 and as you can see immediately most of the edges I want have been selected. Same way if instead of minimum angle if I tell maximum angle you can see except the edges which I want everything else is selected. So there are several options you have on how you want to do your selection. Just to be on the safer side I'll take the minimum edge angle and turn it to be a 90 degree angle. That means only the edges which have exact 90 degrees between their primitives are the ones which get selected. Now that I have the group ready I can drop in a bevel node and in the bevel node I'll shift over to the group. This means only that particular group is the one which gets beveled. I'll also change the bevel type to be a high density round and I'll go to an absolute inset, give it a couple of repetitions and give it a small value of inset. Too many repetitions. Okay, so as you can see quite easily I was able to isolate only the edges which I want for this rounding. But there is a slight problem with this as of now. I'll talk about a little bit more advanced grouping method in just a minute so that I get proper colors. So first let's go ahead and apply a couple of colors on this cube. Now the easiest way to apply different colors is to just select a primitive and apply color. But the problem is we have too many primitives and it's going to take a lot of time. Instead, I'll show you a simpler method, which is I'll create a box, which is the simplest version of representing our Rubik's Cube. I'll go ahead and select different faces I have here and give them different colors. So let's say the top face is going to be a yellow color. So I'll just apply a color to that. Now, immediately there is a problem. As you can see, the color is actually added to points and points actually get shared between faces so the faces have gradations on them. Instead I'll change the class to be a primitive which gives me flat colors. Let me apply two more colors here. I'll select this face, press Q which gives me the same operation again. I'll change it to be green and to be a primitive attribute. Similarly this section I'll change it to orange and again primitive attribute. Once I have this, I want these colors transferred on higher resolution object. The easiest way to do that is using the attribute transfer node because these colors are nothing but attributes which are stored onto my model. If you really want to understand more about attributes, which I definitely recommend, check out Mr. Peter Quinn's videos. I'll put the link in the description. So here, to transfer the attributes for color from this part of the network into this part, I'll use an attribute transfer sop. So I'll pick an attribute transfer, connect the polybevel here, which is a higher end model, and the color model from here. And now if I go back to my attribute transfer, you can immediately see that my colors have been applied to a higher resolution model so quickly. So now if I want to change, let's say, this entire section to be red in color, all I need to do is go back to my color node, select this face, apply color node on that, put red, change it to a primitive node, and I can come back to attribute transfer and you can see it's red. And the best part, I can still go change the color on this and it automatically changes. So all you need to do is apply colors on the different parts of the cube. Now we have almost finished up with the cube except there is a very small 
uh, almost negligible but still a small problem with this cube. As you can see here in this particular corner the color is not going straight. It has this sudden jaggedness over here on the edge which kind of bothers me. It might not even be an issue. You could totally ignore it if the cube is very far off from the camera. But when you're actually modeling just a cube it's just better to take care of these small subtle details. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys are finding these video tutorials useful. In the next one I'm going to show you how exactly to add in a few subtle details onto the cube before finishing with it. Till then if you have any doubts, suggestions or critiques you can put them below the video in the comment section and I'll get back to you. So I hope you guys are having a great time and I'll see you in the next video.